Okay, so before we get started installing and setting up the device software, I want to give a quick introduction to some of the things that you can do with it. So when I run the software, it will detect what platform it's on and use that to set communication defaults. If we jump over to the device UI, uh, we can see on the dashboard there's really not a lot going on, and that's because we haven't provisioned the system and set a device config. So if we do that uh, from the screencast in, or I guess the video in the top right corner, you can see I'm using a PFC3. The specific one is version 0.3.0. So once I load that configuration, I can go back to the dashboard and see all of the sensors and actuators start to load. You can see them in setup and normal. Um, every sensor and actuator in the system runs as its own thread in a state machine. So everything has a well-defined state. You can only transition to other well-defined states. If I refresh the page, you can see all of them have transitioned into normal, except the CO2 sensor. That's because this has a long warm-up time uh, for the heater and heating element to uh, come on and report accurate readings. If we jump back to uh, over to the peripherals tab, we can get some more specific information about each sensor and actuator. Uh, you can see that there's uh, these normal modes, uh, but there's also all of these different functions that are exposed on each peripheral and actuator. So these are actually set um, at the uh, code level, so you don't have to build this uh, each card, build a new card each time uh, the system set up. This is rendered dynamically, so if we want to uh, turn on the light, this isn't going to work because we need to set the system into manual mode. When we set it into manual mode, we're telling the system only listen to commands from this specific card. Don't listen to them from anywhere else in the system. So once I turn on my light panel, you can see the light come on, and uh, yeah, there it is. So we can turn it back off. Uh, reset out of manual mode. So if I refresh the page, you can see that the peripheral has entered manual, and to remove it and set it back into normal mode, we reset the system. So with another quick refresh, we can see that the device has transitioned back into normal. Some of the other features here are for calibration for some of the sensors that drift over time, like pH and EC. You can perform a one, two, or three point calibration. Uh, or even clear your calibration. So some of the other things you can do from the provision tab uh, is connect to a network. So I'm already connected on this device, so you don't see the optional uh, connect to a network uh, drop-down. Uh, this is great for connecting to a home network, however, if you're going to connect to something that's a bit more complicated, like a school network, or there's some uh, complicated firewalls, using the Connect Advanced tab is uh, the place you want to go. There's also an Upgrade tab that's used for upgrading the device software. From the system view, there is a nice admin console that Django ships with out of the box. This is really great to see exactly what's going on in your database, or even add to it. So if we look into the state table, we can see all the substates and exactly what is inside our database at that time. There's also, uh, if we go home, there's also our users, uh, the groups that they're associated with, and all the other information in the database. There's also an API that's exposed on this device, so this is great for connecting to any other local um, IoT device, so if you have something like an Alexa or a Google Home, they can hit these endpoints and get information about your food computer, or set the lighting conditions in your food computer, or even run a recipe. Uh, so, of course, this would require a little bit of software to add this integration, but uh, the endpoints are up, so it is possible. You can get some information about the environment. See, they're just snapshots of the environment over time that report uh, basically what the temperature, humidity, and all the other variables that are recorded in state. There's also images that can be scrubbed back over time, so you can see my little note card plant as it grows. Uh, and also one nice feature here is if we go back to the peripherals, we can actually take a snapshot of what's going on inside the food computer. So if I put this little roll of electrical tape in and take a snapshot, you can see it show up onto the system images here in one moment. 
So there's the electrical tape. This is a really nice feature for debugging the system, uh, especially if you are accessing uh, the device remotely. Uh, what else? There's also the IoT information. This tells you whether we're connected, so this means if we're connected into the Google IoT Cloud uh, and registered onto an account, like I mentioned before, we are not registered in the system, so this is reporting false. Um, and you can check a lot of the other information about IoT. You can view system logs, so get information about the app, the recipe, uh, I2C communication, etc. Look at specific recipes see what system resources are being used, how much free disk, memory, uh, and database size, and also set some settings for the user. So setting a password, um, we're logging out, and finally some help docs for accessing the readme, uh, the license contributing, or even the forum and wiki. So uh, one more thing that we should do before we exit is uh, we might as well start a recipe. So here we can start a blue recipe and this will set the light to be blue with an illumination distance of 15 centimeters at an intensity of 300 micromoles. We can optionally specify the start time to be at a later date but we want this to start now so we won't do that. And if we start the recipe we can see that our device will turn blue in a moment. There we go. And if we refresh the page, we can see that the desired values for the light illumination distance is set to 15 centimeters, the spectrum has been set, and the desired intensity has been set. If you look to the light channel outputs, uh, the blue channel is on at 100% and the cool white is on 50%. So because the blue channel isn't intense enough to hit this 300 micromoles at a 15 centimeter illumination distance, it needs some help from the channel that has the closest spectrum to blue, which is cool white, and this channel will come on 50% so it can approximate uh, hitting, hitting the desired set point. Uh, that's all for the introduction, and we can continue more in the Getting Started tutorial.